Now, I do recognise that I talk about Assassin's Creed more often on this channel than any other game, but it's just a series that I'm quite passionate about. During the early days of Assassin's Creed, the movement was somewhat restricted. Whichever protagonist you were playing as, they never always went in the direction that you wanted them to go. It almost just felt like you were going off the Y and X axis, moving up, down, left and right, especially when climbing buildings. But it was always quite fluid when just running around. The parkour was slightly clunky, and that's what I'm trying to get at. It never really felt like your character was jumping from one ledge to another, it almost felt quite scripted and not of your own accord. I certainly feel like the parkour has loosened up over the series, especially the difference between Assassin's Creed Black Flag and Assassin's Creed Unity. There was certainly a difference between both their parkour mechanics, even though they were mostly aesthetically the same. With Assassin's Creed, I classify them into different phases. So what I like to call Phase 1 is the golden age of the original Assassin's Creed games, going from Assassin's Creed 1 to Assassin's Creed Syndicate. And Phase 2, the Witcher wannabes, which are currently Assassin's Creed Origins and Assassin's Creed Odyssey. The movement from these two phases, or categories, are vastly different to one another. Assassin's Creed 1 through Syndicate certainly had a more restricted, and yet surprisingly fun and quirky element to their parkour. And although Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Origins have a much more fluid parkour system, it almost feels quite bland and insignificant. This might be due to the more open environments in the newer titles, compared to the older Assassin's Creed games, which are more built up in cities rather than those open environments. I almost feel like Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Origins are just too big. I understand that Black Flag did have a very big map compared to other games in the series, but the entirety of the map had a purpose. You went to sea because you needed to upgrade your ship, and so you engaged in battles with other ships to get those parts that were required. You also completed various puzzles to solve, so you could get the Mayan bulletproof armour, which was very powerful and very useful I might add. And on land you completed various contracts as seen in previous Assassin's Creed games. Assassin's Creed Origins and Odyssey feel fairly similar, but they do have a new formula. Origins is very open, but it is just literally covered in land, barely any ocean, and there's no real diversity in the environments. Odyssey, on the other hand, is sort of like a Black Flag 2.0 wannabe, except it doesn't really pull it off. In Assassin's Creed Black Flag, you don't start off as an assassin, in fact you don't really become an assassin until a bit further on in the game. And yet, assassins and templars are still both heavily present throughout the story. In Assassin's Creed Odyssey, there is no real mention of assassins or templars. Honestly, it shouldn't have been called an Assassin's Creed game. It should have been its own thing, and yet the Assassin's Creed name was placed on the game's case. It would have probably worked as a brand new IP for Ubisoft, and although it would have probably been compared to Assassin's Creed Origins, it could have really been a step forward instead of a step backwards. The franchise is called Assassin's Creed for a reason. There needs to be assassins, or some reference to the Creed or even the Templars. To me, 
Assassin's Creed Syndicate was the last true Assassin's Creed. After Syndicate, Ubisoft decided to go for a more open world RPG style for the Assassin's Creed franchise's future. I remember when Assassin's Creed Origins was announced, and until Origins was released, I would literally just free roam around both Black Flag, Syndicate and Unity's maps. Not completing any missions or anything like that, just literally free roaming. Which is something that I think Assassin's Creed has lost in its Phase 2 form. When I play these newer games, I don't find free roaming to be fun at all. Cities are few and far between, and when you get to one, the buildings are usually too far apart or at different heights which breaks the flow of the parkour. And it is a damn shame, because the animation in the newer games looks beautiful. It's just a shame that the open world environment doesn't complement that movement. I think that this is probably one of the biggest differences between the newer and older games. In the newer games, the maps are so big, so you never really see any NPCs outside of the cities. The older games, there were environments full of character and life, because the environments were smaller, so you really felt like it was a thriving city full of real people. Take Assassin's Creed Syndicate for example. There are people in the streets chatting, there are people going into shops, there are people going to pubs, and there are people going into parks. The people in the parks play games, or sit down and have a real conversation on a park bench. These original Assassin's Creed games are not just an empty open world, and then when you get to the cities, there are people. It's just a shame that perhaps the Assassin's Creed franchise is starting to go in that direction. And to conclude, I'm not trying to twist anyone else's views, I just think that perhaps Assassin's Creed has changed in a way that if you put the newer and the older games side by side, they would look like two very different games. And I guess it all just revolves around preference. If you enjoy a more open-ended environment with quests that are placed around the map, then you play the newer Assassin's Creeds. But if you prefer a more enclosed and lived-in experience, then I definitely think you should play the older Assassin's Creeds. Over the years, Assassin's Creed as a franchise has changed quite dramatically. Obviously, there have been innovations that have been good for the series, and innovations that have been bad for the series. Some games have been buggy messes, and others have been absolutely phenomenal in immersing you in the world. So whether you think Assassin's Creed has gone down south, or you think that it's gotten better with the newer iterations, it all just comes down to what you like. And obviously my opinions can't change that, or other people's opinions can't change that. But I think that this video is sort of a brief history on how the franchise has changed over the past few years. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy, then subscribe and turn on that notification button so you don't miss another upload from me. So thank you and goodbye.